many more killings is enough for you? Is it a thousand more? Two thousand more? Three thousand? How many more Palestinians would make you happy if they die? Do you, you, will you be fine if all of the people of Gaza were gone? Would that make you happy? Would that be the thing that makes you proud? And maybe that's the question you should ask Richie. Is he okay? How many more Palestinian lives is he comfortable with? You just watched Ilhan Omar condemn her colleague Richie Torres for defending Israel's war crimes. And if you look at this guy's Twitter timeline, it's evident that he doesn't think Israel can ever do wrong in any circumstance ever. And that's not really surprising for him considering the fact that he is paid by the Israel lobby to represent their right-wing government's position on everything. In fact, AIPAC is his number one campaign contributor. But he's not even pretending to care at all about innocent civilians who are now being punished for the crime crimes of Hamas. He even went as far as to condemn Jewish organizations calling for peace, then subsequently blocked activists who criticized him for it. And if that wasn't despicable enough, he accused critics of his genocidal rhetoric of inciting violence against him. But while he plays the victim, his Muslim colleagues like Ilhan Omar is seeing a spike in death threats with threatening voicemails calling her a terrorist Muslim. And the reason why this is happening, the reason why his Muslim colleagues are getting these calls, getting these voicemails where they're being called terrorists is because people like him suggest that anyone who doesn't unequivocally support Israel must be sympathetic to the Hamas terrorists. But according to him, he's the real victim, not Ilhan Omar, who's getting death threats currently. But he responded to Ilhan Omar's criticism, and he decided to smear her even more. And maybe that's the question you should ask Richie. Is he okay? How many more Palestinian lives is he comfortable with? What's your response? Uh, I mean, I obviously resent those comments. You know, every casualty is a tragedy. Uh, every war is a humanitarian crisis. But we have to keep in mind the causes of the war. Israel did not start the war. The war was imposed upon Israel by the barbaric terrorism of Hamas, which butchered 1,400 Israelis, including babies. You know, my colleague, Representative Omar, you know, has voted against uh, Iron Dome, which is a missile defense system that protects Israeli civilians from relentless rocket fire. Were it not for Iron Dome interceptions, there would be far more dead Israelis, far more by orders of magnitude. And so the policy positions that she has taken would have led to even more dead Israelis and more dead Palestinians. That is a despicable lie to spread about his colleague that is currently facing death threats. Ilhan Omar did not vote against the Iron Dome. It existed before she was a member of Congress. What she and a handful of progressives voted against was further funding for Israel's Iron Dome. And they explained why they voted this way. Rashida Tlaib, for example, who joined Omar in opposing it, stated that she opposed it because giving them money would enable support for Israel's war crimes and human rights abuses committed against the Palestinian people. And she added that the safety of Palestinians should also be considered, considering the fact that they are literally living under a brutal system of apartheid imposed on them by Israel. But he makes it seem as if they voted specifically against the Iron Dome itself because they don't want Israel to have one. Therefore, they must want Israel to be defenseless, i.e. they must support terrorism effectively. He knows that that's dishonest, and it's especially an egregious lie to spread when they're receiving death threats specifically because the people calling them think that they are terrorist Muslims. So it's despicable, and he knows what he's doing, but Richie Torres is completely shameless. Now, he is the one member of Congress who represents the poorest district in the country, but yet he wants to give money to Israel that his constituents need when Israel doesn't need that money. Israel's military is doing just fine. They can already defend themselves. And furthermore, if Israel is able to afford free universal health care for all of its citizens, but we somehow can't, why should our tax dollars go to them? It just doesn't make sense. And if anyone should get funding for an Iron Dome, shouldn't it be Gazans or Palestinians in the West Bank? An Israeli airstrike on the Al-Anzar Mosque in the West Bank, mind you, not in Gaza, killed two and injured three. Where's the calls for their Iron Dome? We're not talking about funding for their Iron Dome. They just don't have one, period. Why is there no concern for them? Again, 
He doesn't care about Palestinians, so he's never going to ask this question. He makes no mention of Israeli war crimes ever, such as collective punishment and their use of white phosphorus. But when he's accused of supporting a genocide, he turns around and he plays the victim as his colleagues are getting death threats. It's just so despicable. And he is a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus for some reason. I mean, I don't know why he's there when he should join the Freedom Caucus. He'd fit right in since, like him, they support a far-right fascist demagogue. The difference is he's smart enough to realize the danger that ultra-nationalist politics pose at home, but somehow can't understand why it's also dangerous in Israel. But Richie Torres isn't the only Democrat who is indifferent to Palestinian suffering at best. In fact, most Democratic politicians are right in line with what he's saying, but they don't try to make it seem as if they're progressive. The difference is Richie Torres purports to be a progressive and is a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. But there's also so-called progressive in the Senate, John Fetterman, who tweeted out support for bloodshed on Twitter last week, writing, Now is not the time to talk about a ceasefire. We must support Israel in efforts to eliminate the Hamas terrorists who slaughtered innocent men, women, and children. Hamas does not want peace. They want to destroy Israel. We can talk about a ceasefire after Hamas is neutralized. Now, many people rightfully pointed out, myself included, Included, that in the name of eliminating Hamas, Israel has been indiscriminately slaughtering innocent civilians who had nothing to do with the Hamas attack. 50% of Gazans are children who did not attack Israel, who has nothing to do with Hamas, who can't release the hostages because they're not the ones who took those hostages captive. So not supporting a ceasefire means that you are okay with innocent civilians, many of which are children, dying. And at this point in time, Israel has killed triple the amount that Hamas has killed in that attack on October 7th. This violence is not going to stop Hamas. They've tried this before, and it hasn't. So just indiscriminately killing civilians is not the, not the answer, which is why people are calling for a ceasefire. But John Fetterman says, nope, now is not the time to talk about a ceasefire. Now, his reprehensible comment there was met with fierce pushback, and that's because people are starting to wake up. A ceasefire is the bare minimum supported by 66% of Americans, according to a Data for Progress poll, and that includes 80% of Democrats. But yet he had the audacity to say that now is not the time to talk about a ceasefire. When 80% of Democrats rightfully think this is what should happen right now, because again, indiscriminate bombing of civilians is not going to eradicate Hamas. You're just punishing people, namely children, who had nothing to do with the disgusting October 7th attacks. Now, he was asked about the backlash that he received in, a, in an interview with Pod Save America, and... Um, his response here was just straight up incoherent. It was a non-answer, but let's listen. You called out some of your uh, progressive colleagues this week for, for blaming the Gaza hospital explosion on Israel, and you said in a statement, quote, we can talk about a ceasefire after Hamas is neutralized. So what do you say to people, um, you say to people including uh, you know, a lot of Israelis who absolutely agree that Hamas needs to be neutralized, mm -hmm. but are worried that a massive ground invasion of Gaza could lead to tens of thousands of more civilian casualties, a bigger war in the Middle East, and ultimately potentially a less secure Israel. No, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's an awful situation, absolutely, as well, too. And, you know, I you know, value the, you know, the, my children, I have three children, the lives of my children with an Israeli child or a Palestinian child and, and all that. I mean, nobody, nobody wants, you know, civilians. We have to make sure uh, of the, the welfare of the civilians. But, but, you know, it's to remember that Hamas doesn't want peace. He doesn't want to be negotiated with or, I mean, and, you know, they massacred, you know, you know innocent children, women, and now they have over 200 hostages with them right now as well too. So um, I, I really believe that I'm always gonna to decide to stand on the side of Israel you know, in this place. And, and, and also after the, the hospital tragedy, uh, now everyone now we know that it was, it was the, you know, it was, uh, I guess, Islamic Jihad, and they tried to blame it on Israel on top of that as well too, compounding that. And I was disappointed by a lot of the out, uh, the media outlets that now kind of pushed that narrative coming out immediately saying, well, well, Hamas says that it was, it was an Israeli, uh, rocket, which we all now agree that it's, that wasn't the case. Notice how there wasn't many claps when he said that he's going to always support Israel. And that's because Democrats know that unequivocally supporting any government, including our own government, 
isn't a very wise thing to do because the world isn't black and white, right? Governments can do wrong, and oftentimes they do do wrong, and especially when this government has been using white phosphorus, has engaged in collective punishment, which is a war crime, saying that you unequivocally will always support them right now just isn't a very good look. That's why you didn't get applause from Democrats in that audience. Now, he says that, you know, he's mad that Rashida Tlaib jumped to conclusions when it comes to the hospital attack. Now, we still don't know definitively who is responsible for that hospital attack, contrary to popular belief. Now, we don't know. It's okay to say that we don't know. But I don't think that it's insane to think that Israel is lying, considering the fact that they lie all the time. They lied about killing journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. So, it's not outrageous to think, oh my God, people think that Israel is lying as they're bombing Gaza. It just It's ridiculous to me. That he's that outraged about people's skepticism here when it's warranted. Now, second of all, he said that Hamas, or should I say Hamas, as he called them, doesn't want peace. Now, that's true, but the Israeli government also does not want peace, hence why they funded Hamas. And furthermore, if Hamas all of a sudden just started advocating for peace, that wouldn't matter because... They're not the ones who are doing an occupation. There is a power imbalance here. Israel has all the power, and they and they alone can end the occupation, which, which will facilitate peace. But they're not doing that. So you can acknowledge the role that Hamas plays here, but to just pretend like Israel has no culpability in this entire situation whatsoever. I mean, it's not like this conflict started on October 7th. The occupation has been going on for decades, but he just pretends as if that's not the case. Just strips the nuance and context away from the entire situation. Yes, the crime that Hamas committed is bad. However, you can't just pretend as if that happened in a vacuum. There's going to be radicalization when you have a group of people who are subjected to the largest open-air prison. That's not justifying what Hamas did, but it's important to know this so we can understand why this is happening. Because if we don't know how, why this is happening, how are we going to be able to stop it? Now, when he said he defends Israel and will always defend Israel, he didn't make no mention of their war crimes or the occupation. And the reason why he's lying by omission here is because he is terrified of the pro-Israel lobby, right? So I can't say that he's funded by APAC like Richie Torres, but I do know that he is scared shitless of them. And we know this because during his campaign, he basically allowed Democratic Majority for Israel to edit his campaign messaging so that way they wouldn't fund his Democratic opponents in the primary. Ryan Grimm of The Intercept explains, Mark Melman, this is the head of the Democratic Majority for Israel, had reached out to Fetterman with questions about his position on Israel. Quote, he's never come out and said that he's not a supporter of Israel, but the perception is that he aligns with the squad more than anything else, Democratic activist Brett Goldman told Jewish Insider. Melman said the campaign responded to his inquiry and came with an interest in learning about the issues. Following the meeting, the Fetterman campaign breached back out. Then they sent us a position paper, which we thought was very strong, Milman said, but it wasn't quite strong enough. Jewish Insider reported that DMFI emailed back some comments on the paper, which Fetterman was receptive to addressing in a second draft. In April, Fetterman agreed to do an interview with Jewish Insider. Quote, I want to go out of my way to make sure that it's absolutely clear that the views that I hold in no way go along the lines of some of the more fringe or extreme wings of our party, he said. I would also respectfully say that I'm not really a progressive in that sense. Yeah, no shit. Fetterman unprompted stress there should be zero conditions on military aid to Israel, that BDS is wrong, and so on. Let me just say this. Even if I'm asked or not, I was dismayed by the Iron Dome vote, Fetterman added. DMFI and Apex stayed out of the race. Yeah. So you can see why he said what he said. He didn't want pro-Israel interest groups spending against him. He was even against BDS, a peaceful movement to get Israel to end apartheid. So we've got politicians who unequivocally support Israel because they're either cowards, like John Fetterman, or they're corrupt, which is the case with Richie Torres. But whatever the reason may be for so-called progressive politicians supporting Israel's far-right government, 
it's not acceptable. Amnesty International has released multiple articles calling out damning evidence of war crimes by the Israeli government, also demanding an end to the blockade and asking them to end the evacuation order. But they're not biased. They've also condemned Hamas's attack on innocent Israeli civilians as well, rightfully so, because they care about human rights. Now, if you've been following this story for a while, you'll notice a bit of a pattern. So if you condemn Israeli war crimes, you'll be asked why you haven't condemned Hamas. But once you point out that you've already condemned Hamas, you'll then be called anti-Semitic for not supporting Israel's right to defend itself. And this is basically the go-to playbook. We've been seeing it for decades, but this is a very dangerous game to play by supporters of Israel. Condemning the war crimes of Israel's far-right fascist government does not make you anti-Semitic in the same way that condemning Saudi Arabia's war crimes doesn't make you Islamophobic. Now, the same people who justify Israel's war crimes by conflating all Palestinians with Hamas also tend to conflate all Jewish people with the government of Israel. So that way, if you don't support the government of Israel, that is tantamount to you not supporting the Jewish people. Therefore, if you oppose the actions of the Israeli government, you also by default oppose Jewish people in general. And that is so harmful because it makes both communities unsafe conflating the actions of a government or a representative body with the actions of people, it makes these communities unsafe because it rationalizes hatred against them for actions that they're not responsible for. And we've already seen the ramifications of this rhetoric. The president of a Detroit synagogue was stabbed to death inside of her home a week after a six-year-old Palestinian-American boy was stabbed to death by his landlord. And this is what happens when politicians reinforce the narrative that you are a terrorist sympathizer, for example, if you're opposed to the Israeli government's war crimes or if they pretend like Jewish peace organizations organizations leading calls for a ceasefire aren't actually representative of the Jewish people because they would never be this disloyal to Israel or something like that. Seems like I've heard that somewhere before. It's gross, but politicians like Richie Torres and John Fetterman, they have to lie. They have to obfuscate. And also, it's not just outright lies. It's lies by omission as well in order to defend what is indefensible to most people. Most people realize that what Israel is doing is wrong, hence why thousands around the world over the weekend took to the streets to call for a ceasefire in support of Palestinian people who had nothing to do with the crimes of Hamas. But make no mistake about it, if you support a far-right regime that is currently doing war crimes and overseeing an apartheid, you are not a progressive. Full stop. Progressives don't sympathize with fascist governments. In the same way, it would be absurd for any progressive to support Viktor Orban in Hungary or Narendra Modi in India or Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil or Javier Millet in Argentina. It's absurd to uncritically support Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel. So if you support a fascist demagogue, you are not a progressive. So you can pretend to be a progressive and claim to be a progressive, but what you're doing right here is exposing you. So any progressive who says that they uncritically support Israel as they do a genocide in Gaza, they're not a progressive. And when people tell you who they are, you should believe them.